Hey everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Star Trek Discovery Season 1, Episode 9. It's called Into the Forest I Go. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. I, I agree with their thinking that this makes a much better leaving off point for the uh, the break. Absolutely. This this felt like, for, for uh, a lot of this, this could have felt like a season final. It, yeah, it potentially could have been, because it paid off a lot of things that we've been building up to throughout the the rest of the season and even just compared it to last week's like cliff it's like yeah this one felt a bit better to because to, it was more like we dealt with a lot of things i mean obviously there's still things to do with some stuff from the first half of the season but it paid off in so much and in the final moment was actually a case of no here's something kind of new that we've not really done yet. yeah here's something like- I, I can't even fathom the idea that last week was supposed to be the break after watching this. I don't think it was... Uh, it, when they made that call, I don't think it was based on where the story was at that point in the episode. Because I think when it was written, it was written as just straight 15 episodes. And I think it was just a case of, we think that's what we can get done in time. Right, yeah, probably. And then I think they got closer and they realised, oh no, wait, we'll have episode 9 done as well for the week after. We can... We can do that. We can go up to that point, and it's yeah. a better one to leave it on. I, th- I think that's maybe where the decision came from. Uh, I think it's so a great decision. That was a good idea. So, because uh, this was a pretty strong episode. Um, yeah, it was. Now we liked a lot of the stuff from last week, but we, you know we're very murky on the, the you know the the Admiral and Laurel stuff uh, on the Klingon ship. That was kind of mm. the, the easily a big weak point. One of the weakest things that's maybe happened uh, in a while on the show. Yeah. Uh, here, this cleared that up. It doesn't. Really, it doesn't. It doesn't retroactively make last episode any uh, those points any better. But this episode didn't have those problems. This episode, it just kind of when it got to it, it was like, no, no, okay, right. So we're, we're, it's, it's clear now where we are with this thing, and it, yeah. it, it moved from there. So, uh, so good. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so we're at we're at uh, Pavo, and the Klingons are coming there. Uh, the ship of death, <laughs> or whatever, whatever it was called. Um, and they're coming. Calls the one. This is because call ship. He's coming. He's like, oh, this is the discovery. This is their secret weapon. And Starfleet orders them back. They orders the discovery back to the starbase, starbase forty six. And it's like, no, don't put the discovery in danger. And I actually thought that this, uh, this you know, high ranking officer, this this Vulcan, it was like, this feels very on Starfleet this year. I, I mean, Lork is explaining to you that this peaceful life form on this planet is about to be obliterated by Klingons because they're going to be seen as working with us. And this guy's yeah. like, no, no, I come back. It's too risky to put the discovery in harm's way. Right, I think it's supposed to be another one of those times of going, that's how much this war is affecting them. That, you know, mm. like their, their usual ideologies are just out the window right now. What I loved about it, though, is that I actually had kind of one of the first real moments of kind of emotion from the crew. And by the crew, I kind of mean other characters. I, I think I've noticed all season we've had, you know, we have this red head who's got like a little device in the side of her head. Uh, yeah, yeah. On, she was on the she was on the first ship as well. Yeah, she she she's been there all season. What's her name? Uh, Detmer, Kayla Detmer. Her name is. Uh, and then Reese is the Asian guy. Like I feel like I've I've started to recognise the faces because they're always on the bridge, but we don't really know them in any particular way. Yeah, I couldn't have told you their names. But there's a moment after the, this this Vulcan has told him, "No, you're turning back," and he turns off the, the comms. And Locker turns around and gives the order, right, warp three, go to go, go to the star base. And she just kind of like has this moment of hesitation, like, really, sir? Yeah. And it was the first time I kind of went, you know what, yeah, I, I, I got from that one little moment that the crew doesn't feel comfortable with this, that they're leaving these people to die, or this life form to die. I shouldn't say people, because they're, they're not even, you know, corporeal. They're not people, yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 they're weird... Uh, beings. Beings of some kind that are all connected yes. with the planet, but... Uh, I, I like that a lot, though. It was kind of the first time I think in the show where I felt like that you know that that's that Star Trek sympathy for other life forms that I I don't think they've really. But it's not that they've not had it, but we've just not seen it in display. Yeah, and I think you know when talking about the the rest of the crew, I think there's a few moments in this where it actually focuses on a few of the other members. Like, even in just like it's it's quick shots of montages, things happening basically, but. It makes a point of showing these other people what what yeah. they're thinking in their faces. Yeah, the, the third crew member that I always recognise, uh, I don't know what you call him, but it was like a weird alien dude with like a sort yeah, of... Yeah, he's like the, the techie. Yeah, he's, he's got like a sort of, sort of dark, sort of glossy and, bit and, in his and, face, but then sort of maybe, like a... Yeah, it might be communications. Yeah, grey, purpley kind of skin for the rest yeah. of his head. Uh, but he, he looks kind of cool. <laughs> he does. 
But no, I, I want to learn more about these people, and I, I think it, it added a bit of weight to that moment that Lorca wasn't really happy they had to do this. And of course, as soon as they start travelling, he explains what he's doing. Hey, let's have an excuse for why we're not just uh, using the, uh, the the spore drive, and you know, warping takes enough time. If we think of a plan that we can actually you know succeed on, if we think of a plan that we can that we can enact, and it'll give us a chance to fight the Klingons, then we'll just teleport back here and we'll do it. Uh, it's a pretty good plan, to be fair. Yes, it's not not bad, and even to the point where he goes up to Stamets, he's like, "Hey, Stamets, uh, yeah, uh, you so you've been having some problems then, so we can't use the spore drive." He's like, uh, "Yeah, now that you mention it, sir, it's, it's a bit itchy." Yeah, <laughs> itchy. That's the best he's got. Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, go down and get a, a full checkup." He's like, "What, really?" He's like, "Well, yeah, we need the paper trail. Go." <laughs> yeah, he's not happy about that because obviously he's hiding things. He's hiding side effects, which leads to uh, a pretty big laugh later on. Because yeah. obviously he's found to have all these effects, his brain's going weird, Culber's not happy, and then later on, because he claims he's got no side effects, and then when they're back in the, this, 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 the lab, and Tilly's just like, oh, so you finally told me about your side, side effects, and just the way he looks over at her is like, oh, oh, and she knows exactly. Look, it's, it's just Immediately she's like, oh no. <laughs> half a sec, it's like half a second and she knows what she's just done. Yeah, uh, and it's it's kind of glorious. So, um, so now that was that was good stuff. Um, and the the plan basically amounts to, uh, they they have they've got a way to maybe figure out how to track these Klingons, uh, the, the invisible, you know, with the, the cloaking shields and stuff, and they're going to figure it out by having two people beam over to the ship and put some because uh, what they're going to do is they're going to jump they're going to do this the spore jump 130 times i believe is the number and kind of map out uh these acronicities in the in the the data uh, yeah. but to do so to actually know what's data they're, they're looking at properly they have to actually put like a uh, you know basically a basically a tracker on the klingon ship it, it's something to to ping off yeah while, while it's cloaked so that they know where it is yeah, because because uh, Saru points out, oh, this is a good idea, but there's so many like things and that you could mistake for being the ship. That's why they have to put the trackers uh, on there. So that so it ends up being Michael and Ash that beam aboard, which Lork is not happy about at first, but Michael kind of convinces him, no, it should be me. I, I know I've been on the ship before. I know where the various things are, and so they go over to try and do this and. Uh, Stamets is going to make 130 jumps, which does not feel like it's going to go well for his health, and he looks like he's just getting sicker and sicker as they're doing these jumps. He's like, yeah. uh, how many have we got left? Oh, we got 70 left? Oh, okay. And it just keeps, keeps going, and he just looks like he's dying in the in the containment. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Like, they, they want to pull him out after, like, 30-odd. And to be fair, he doesn't want to do it at first either, because it, it, the captain tells him about it, and he's like, uh, sir, that's, like, super dangerous, and I could die, and blah, you know, so and so on. And... He actually, the way he convinces me, he appeals to the explorer, and I mean, he appeals to the you know the scientist. He's like, "Hey, I've been mapping everywhere we've went with all your jumps, and he, you know this hologram comes up, and he's like, "Hey, look at these weird pockets. These could be portals to alternate universes." Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. "Yes." If, if, if I wasn't suspicious yeah. about Lorca before, I would be very suspicious now that he has been tracking all this data and keeping it a secret from all it's the scientists. Almost like he wants to go home. I mean, there are, there are some very strong indicators of that in this episode. It's almost like he wants to go home, but uh, that's the thing, though. It's like, is he actually evil necessarily, or is it? Because throughout this episode, he seems like he's making a lot of the right calls in terms of he, what he's doing. I mean, for... uh, just looking at it, I'd say he is making the right calls. Yeah. He, he he obviously, I think, he has an ulterior motive, but the calls are like like making all these micro jumps to get. You know the 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 beacon and you know to track the cloaked ships is a great call, but the reason for it for him is so that he can get more data to fill out this map. Because hmm. you know, like I said, every time you jump, we get more data. We get closer to to mapping this. Yeah, because that, that's the thing. Because the calculations would take like days, like four or five days to like calculate the results, and they need to do it instantly. So the the plan is that every time he jumps, they get they get like a a, a quick chunk of data so if you do it 130 times we can get it all in about five minutes that, that's yeah. kind of the idea and so it's a shortcut and it's funny actually because the, the Klingon ship's going to go away it's going to it's going to just like uh you know 
warp warp out of here. Let's get the shit out of here once because once they see this, the discovery just sort of jumping around them, they're like, oh no, this is oh, this is bad shit. Let's get out of here. Yeah, uh, and calls it. No, I've had enough of this. And it's actually just lucky that Michael is sort of listening in at that point with a translator, and she's like, all right, no, I need to put a stop to that. And she starts, you know, firing yeah, phaser blasts off just to keep them there. Yeah, just just to sort of distract them and keep their keep their mains occupied plan. for all. But yeah, um, so the admiral is alive. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it was as soon as they, cause they got on the ship and they're like, oh, there's another life, human life form on the ship. And it's like, oh, that's strange. And I'm like, oh, I guess it's the Admiral's alive. I did the exact same thing. <laughs> and it made it clear to me that last week was just badly done. I don't think it was ever supposed to be vague. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I remember we were discussing if it was meant to be vague and they just kind of mishandled it a bit. But I, I think this was, the way they handled it here was like, no, this wasn't meant to be a secret. Yeah, no. Uh, so they, they get into that, that room and all the dead Klingons and the cap the admiral's there uh, and Laurel's there because we, obviously we heard it at the end of last week because she, uh, well, she was put there as well for trying to betray them and Ash has like a, a freak panic attack when he sees her like it brings up all these things and I'll tell you this I don't think I mean I know they hinted that oh she took a liking to him and she liked torturing him yeah. and all the rest of it and they're like and it was in this episode specifically but it was, it was starting to sound more like was, like a, was this like a sexual relationship oh like, did you not get that before the the first time it wasn't as clear. I feel like this time it was a lot oh. more heavily implied that it was actually more. I'm not sexual. gonna lie. I think that's what I jumped to before. The way it was always the way you said that she took a liking to me was. Mm. I think that was always the implication. Uh, no, I I never thought it was sexual until this episode. Oh, and okay. sure enough, by the end of the episode, uh, he's having these weird, you know, PTSD flashbacks of Klingon sex. Yeah, uh, I, ne- I never thought I'd be seeing Klingon tits. <laughs> no, I was not. Show. I was not expecting the Klingon test. I was uh, not... You know, I know they said this was going to be a, a mature rated st- Star Trek show, but I wasn't expecting Klingon tits mature. That's the thing, though. It almost feels less mature because it's Klingon. It feels <laughs> it does, goofier. It feels like it this does, goofier thing. It, it's. It, it almost was like, well, we can. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I like. I just. I wasn't expecting it. So, but there we go. We have this weird. And honestly, like, th- I think at this point, I, I'm almost because I think people who were suspecting that he was secretly someone else or whatever else, I'm not sure that that still holds after this episode. No, I like that they kind of even addressed it because when when they get breaking onto the ship and you know Michael's trying to hack open the door, and he's like, "Here, let me try." And she looks at him and is like, "Really? How are you going to do this if I can't?" She's really suspicious. Yeah, and he like, has to be like, yeah, but I, I was prisoner on one of these sh- on this ship for like seven months. I think I think uh, I know a thing or two by now. Yeah, um, I mean they they could swear that that he's secretly so, like the other Klingon because that's why she liked him in the first place is because she could recognize that he was in there and maybe Ash doesn't know he's secretly someone else, but it's a bit of a stretch. I feel like right now I'm I'm more inclined to think that no, this is actually just this weird perverse relationship where she. I agree. I think. I think it might be uh, a Stockholm Syndrome style thing, mm. where you know, like, cause obviously, at the end of his place, he goes back to her, in the in the, the in, when she's a prisoner. Yeah, and yeah, you, you, I mean, yeah, you can read that as you know, he just wants to face his his fear essentially and deal with it, but it's it's possible that he actually developed this relationship as a Stockholm Syndrome mm. style thing. Yeah, oh, I mean, I suppose you could read into her saying, uh, you know, I won't let anyone hurt you at, at the end. Yeah, is actually being genuine. Yeah, no, is it genuine or is it because again, if it is someone else deep down, that he and he's not unaware that he's actually this other Klingon. Like, you know, is she saying that because she's talking to him? Really? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know. That feels it, less likely to me. It's, it's less likely. I, I, I'm not necessarily on that boat either. But I, I just, you know, for for the sake of devil's advocate and looking no, at the I avenues, agree. I think I think if they do go that route. As of right now, I will be disappointed because I don't think it's been seeded well enough, unlike the stuff with Lorca. Well, I think that's a weird thing to say, you'll be disappointed because the, 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 they, might be, they might start seeding it more properly for the next... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, if they do, like, yeah. then fair enough. That's what I said, as of right now. Well, yeah, but that, that only matters if they do it in the next like two episodes. <laughs> Yeah. If they spend time building to it after this and then if they have time to do it, then I feel like it's fine. Yeah, that, that's fair. Um... Really interesting a little bit actually when uh, when Stamets is doing all the jumping and he starts freaking out and like kind of hallucinating in the middle. He says something which I'm I'm taking as a premonition. Yeah, that's what I thought. It says in the forest. That's where the I I don't end or die. I forget the exact phrasing. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, but it was basically you know in the forest. That's where they die. 
And I thought, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> what does that mean? Who, yeah, who's we've they? seen that he has these odd, you know, time perception abilities. Well, I yeah, guess, I mean, yeah. during the mud episode, he was like, yeah. he was outside of time, and he could he could remember all of it. So what's to say right. that he's not getting weird glimpses of of the future? Which is which is also what I kind of so yeah, we we mentioned I think it was last week where he calls Tilly a captain. We were like, oh, was that him? Mixing exactly. Time? Yeah. Uh, that's him kind of yeah just getting a glimpse of something from the future yeah. so i i think joe, joe would be amazing to me and i know people would hate that it takes this long but i actually think the best thing ever from that statement uh from statements which is almost a statement no okay uh that, the, that was a trust. that was a trust. I, i'll give you that one but what i think the best thing for me would be for that would be if that actually doesn't happen until the final season of the show See, see if it doesn't have like if that was the if that's actually the last episode if that's the ending almost last episode or just somewhere towards the end game like say it goes seven seasons and we're at se- season seven episode like ten you know and there's, yeah. uh, assuming it's like fifteen episodes again and it's like no this is where we get to somewhere in that end game and it like it like some people would hate that it doesn't get addressed till then I would love if they were playing such a long well, game no, with see that. I wouldn't mind because as of right now it feels like you can read it as just a oh he has in a moment like they think. And then, if they never address it again, then he just had a moment. It was just a random line. You know, it doesn't have to matter. But then, if they go in the last season, they go, "No, we're going to do that." Then it's it's a it's a nice callback. It's a it's it, this becomes a little you know it's a bit of foreshadowing rather than something that needs to happen immediately. I, I, I'm all for setting things up in episode one that don't pay off until episode 100. I, I'm a big fan of the I'm, long I'm game. I'm down for it. I'm a big fan of it. I'm down for it. Someone on uh, on Reddit pointed out uh, at a fantastic line for agents of shield which has me very excited for the next season it's something from like episode nine the line you can tell me after we're done recording oh well this. yes uh anyway where was it yes yeah, so yes yeah, he has that little moment and of course it all builds up to the big moment at the end where he's like captain i'm not doing any more jumps i'll do one more we'll get back to the base yeah, but that's yeah done. basically because they're still scared of the klingons coming yeah. chasing them well yeah because they, 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 they figure out the cloaking system and they actually destroy the ship. Because Cole's gone. That, that's why it kind of does feel like a genuine mid-season final. Because that's him gone. Like we've dealt with the, the, the main Klingon villain. And obviously, yeah. we have the Klingon war still happening. We still have Laurel on the ship. I actually love that she just sort of jumped up and grabbed Ash as he was teleporting. Yeah, uh, yeah that was, that was good. Was, but, was and obviously, we know that the other Klingon clans were... They've kind of gotten into this war beyond it ju- just being Cole now. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, but they were definitely setting him up as the main villain, and now he's gone. Like so, uh, yeah. it definitely feels like the, the, a mid-season finale of sorts because of that. Because we've wrapped up some elements of it. I, uh, I appreciate that they 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 surprised me with that because I think yeah. I was expecting him to stick around longer. I'm actually glad because I wasn't loving him, and it, honestly, I was really happy when uh, I was like, "Oh, a ble- blessed the translator," because then all the click on was in English, and it was like <laughs> finally. And again, I want to emphasize this. I watch a lot of foreign movies. I have no problem with subtitles. I have problem with Klingon because it's a stupid language that sounds annoying, and that that that's the that's the thing. So, um, what was I saying? Yes. Uh, so yeah, at the end, and it's like one last jump. And as soon as he said, "I'll do one last jump," I'm like, "Okay, well, this is the one that's going to go absolutely wrong." Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just know it's it's the way it's the moment plays, and it's like one last jump, just just for you know for old yeah. time's sake almost. Yeah. So he goes in. And of course, he starts to. I mean, I was I was almost expecting to just fly out, die, like just. I I, I w- wouldn't have been surprised after they'd gone as far as killing Cole, mm. you, which obviously, like I said, we, we they'd set up as the main antagonist up to this point. I was prefer- prepared for them to just kill Stemets here and you know swerve me again. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which <laughs> should make me maybe make Culber. Uh, like a, a, this hard ass doctor, he'd be a lot more McCoy after this because he'd be grumpy all the time. He'd be, he'd be depressed. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so so one last jump and he goes to it, but something goes wrong. He starts freaking out halfway through to the point where he, his eyes go all white. He, he falls out the thing. Yeah. And we should point out, Lorca changed the destination. We see him do it on his chair. Hmm. Yeah. Like we see him change. You know, like like because obviously he thinks they're just going to Starbase, whatever. And he he changes the command. Yeah, and but it all goes wrong. It doesn't go to where he thinks it's going either. Uh, the the basically freaks out mid jump, and they just kind of appear somewhere, and they're looking outside. Like you know, everyone's sort of looking out the the portholes and whatnot. And there's like debris of like Klingon ships, 
Uh, that's what at least one of them they says. Think, yeah. That's what they think. Yeah, that's the best what I've got to go on right now. Uh, no one knows where they are, and I'm like, okay, so they're, they're lost somewhere, but are they even in their own reality anymore? And or if in their own reality, are they in the same time period anymore? Like, I feel like there's so many possibilities as to where this I mean, so dropped them. We we've been going under the assumption and prevailing theory that Locke is from the mirror universe. This did a lot to kind of add to the idea that he's from somewhere else, at the very least. Yeah, I mean, I think people jump to that specific universe because it's the one that's kind of famous in Star Trek. I mean, yeah. you could argue there's tons of alternate realities. He could be from any one of them. There is, and they make a point of that. Even statements when he comes out, he goes, no, there's so much more than I thought. Like, you know, I, I can see them all. Because mm. um, obviously his eyes go white and he can see parallel Earths now, I guess. Parallel worlds. Yeah, yeah. But... um Lorca, before he does the jump, and you know when he changes the command, he makes a point of saying, "Let's go home." And it feels like you know he's saying that to himself, but he looks genuinely confused afterwards as well. So I don't think it went to the mirror universe if that is where he's from. It, no, I don't think it went to his universe. Or if no, it did, I, or if it did go to his universe, it's not what it was like when he left it. Right. Um, right. But the point is, it didn't work. It didn't go right. Something went wrong, and there's somewhere where no one knows. Whether that's in a different time period, whether it's in a different universe, or just in a different part of the universe that no one knows about, and they're confused. Yeah. Uh, the Klingon debris certainly implies the future. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but I think it just implies that it's post-war. Not necessarily true. It doesn't have to be, but it, it, like I think that's your first inclination to go with, right? That's fair. Yeah. You know, after some more battles have taken place, it just I don't know, makes some sense, but um, I think my, I my my best theory right now is it's a it's an alternate dimension, but not the one that Lorca intended to go to. It was it, they accidentally yeah. ended up in the wrong one. No, he miscalculated. I, I yeah, I I'm fairly on board with that. Yeah, which is exciting. It means the, the this last chunk of the season will be very different because they're going to have to figure out how to get home. How, how to get home? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and well, at first they're going to have to figure out where the hell they are. Like, how how do they figure out? Did they, did they run into another ship? Did they run into uh, themselves? Did they run into you know whatever? Yeah, who knows? Uh, I'm excited though because I think this did a really great job as a as a place to break because it's left me in a place where I I want to know what comes next. I want to see what the next part of the journey is. But I don't feel cheated that I have to wait to get it. No. Like, like, like I said last week, I think I'd have felt cheated because it felt like okay, no, this was a two-part thing. Whereas this feels like okay, no, we've 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 gone through that first part of the story. Now this was the end of that part of the story with you know the destruction of the ship with Cole. This now this is this is almost just a tease for what comes next, the the rest of the season. Yeah, uh, I, I'm and honestly, it's more interesting than the plot in the first chunk. It is, and. It lends its name to, you know, Discovery. This is, you know, we're discovering alternate Earths. Because, I, I, I mean, that ties into kind of statements thing is he wants to be a discoverer. He wants to explore things. Because, I mean, Lorca even uses the line, you want to go where no one's went before. Like, yeah, he, yeah. he says it's, that it's, in the it's scene. That, it, it's why he's a, you know, he's a scientist. It's that curiosity to discover, to learn. And I, I think... Uh, like Klingon wars are fine, but, you know, Star Trek's had a lot of Klingons in the past. I, I, don't, I don't think most people were necessarily enthused with the idea it was going to be a Klingon war the whole time. And that's still going on, and I'm actually kind of excited about Laurel and uh, and Ash's kind of development and where that's going to go, because I feel like there's... Uh, I don't know if I've ever... Expl- I don't know if Star Trek's ever explored a Klingon-human relationship. Or certainly not one as a seemingly as destructive and abusive as this one seems to be. Oh, at, definitely not in that way. <laughs> at present. Uh, no. I would certainly... was like... Oh, by the way, there's going to be a love triangle in this new Star Trek TV show. Oh, man. Yeah, but one of them's a Klingon. Oh. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Michael and Laurel are going to have to uh, fight it out. <laughs> Quite possibly. Um, Speaking of Michael fighting things out, I enjoyed the fight with Cole. It was not bad. It was it was a, an old school kind of... And I say old school, I mean, it wasn't as old school as the original Trek. Uh, no, but it was slow paced. It wasn't, you know, frantic all over. Yeah. Um, I did like her teleporting midair, like her jumping over the, yeah, the edge. Yeah, and grabbing the, the dog tag. Yeah. Would we call it a dog tag, though? I feel like that's... I, I mean, for better, lack of a better it word. Serve, it it serves the purpose, but it's our, it's our emblem. It, was, uh... it is our emblem, but I, I, I think it's it is, it's still dog tags, isn't it? That's why when it has the name and they treat it like that, you know, that, that's what it is. Uh, Giorgio's uh, dog tag, which is a uh, uh, call had on him. He, he was using it as a toothpick. 
seems about the right shape. Mm. Uh, so no, uh, I, no, I'm pretty happy with this episode. I mean, I think the mud episode was maybe tighter and more fun overall, but I think this one was actually more impressive in the sense that it's made me a lot more excited about where the plot's going next show. I, I agree with that. I think mud episode onwards, the show's really picked up though. Like on the whole, like where I've been going, okay, I see it's got it's got a bit more focus, a bit more direction, and it's feeling a bit more Star Trek. Obviously, last episode we had the problems with uh, you know the the Laurel and the Admiral stuff. But those aside, it was a good episode. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like it's finding its feet uh, a yeah. bit more as it goes, uh, and I'm excited because I, I think that 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 cliffhanger at the end of whatever episode it was with the with the mirror and you know with Stamets and he walked away and the, the yeah. reflection was there. I think that was the first time I legitimately went, oh, oh my, oh my, what's mm. going on here? Yeah, and obviously that seems to tie into what's going on with him right now, and the idea that he's seeing something from somewhere else, and maybe he wasn't always aware of it and whatever. Or, but that's the thing, if he's seen something is another version of him looking back and seeing that's him. It. Or, you know, we were talking about how he's kind of outside of time. Was that mirror version, not just not on that version, was it for like a future version? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're playing with a lot of interesting ideas with this stuff, and that's that's cool. It is. Uh, the, the show's, I think it's finally got me excited to know what comes next, instead of just being like, okay, I'm enjoying this. And it's nice, because I feel like there's so many shows where you start, the first few episodes are, 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 are you know, decent, okay, whatever, and you're like, okay, I hope it finds its footing, and sometimes it will, and it's great when it does, because it feels like it's getting better, you, you, you kind of been rewarded for giving it a little bit of... Uh, giving it a chance. Yeah, a bit of chance, but, bit of leeway, benefit of the doubt, whatever you want to call it, and sometimes it doesn't, though, I feel like more often than not, like, you'll give it a chance, and then you'll get maybe five, six episodes in and go, no, this is still kind of rough, and uh, you'll maybe go a whole season even, and you'll get to the end of the season and go, I kind of wasted my time <laughs> with, with the whole season. It's, yep, we've all been there. And it's just, it's nice that this, at least seemingly in the last three or four episodes, has kind of started the, its upward climb uh, to, to something a bit better. So, I agree. So good. All right. It's enjoyable, yeah. Uh, I, I guess uh, I guess that's, that's us. Oh, I should probably mention the Admiral's paralysed. Uh, she's going to be fine. Because uh, Starfleet have really good <laughs> medical <laughs> facilities, yep. but she she couldn't move her legs. The, at first. the question is, you know, like like she still presumably remembers everything what she was going to say yeah. about Lorca. So, well, I was actually thinking about that as he was being told because uh, he gets told that she'll be fine over the comms, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, that's good news." And I'm thinking, like, "Is it good news for you though?" <laughs> yeah, and he, but, he goes, "Yeah, to send him my regards," and he turns away, and he's just like, "Balls." Honestly, the, the way I'm going to read that. I mean, again, if they're in an alternate universe now, it's the least of his worries. But yeah. um, the way I was kind of reading it was maybe that, you know, maybe by actually pulling all of what he just did off. He kind of gets away with it. Yeah, getting the medal and stuff. Like, maybe she'll be like, you know what, maybe I'll leave him in place because he's actually doing... Yeah, no. Uh, and alternatively, I do wonder if that's the reason why he was like, no, I'm doing this now. This is, you know, like going home. Because like, mm. he's like, I can't stay any longer. This is, you know, she's going to do this and then i'm gonna lose access to this ship I, it's now or never yeah yeah no, i can i can see that so uh real solid episode um i think uh some re- nice little moments as well I, I like that you know when michael comes back and she's got the the little emblem and there's just this this is after they've succeeded and they've destroyed the ship which is actually very easy once they know where it is they actually just you know photons and then just well that's it to be fair the ship's big advantage has always been that it's been cloaked it's never yeah. been like superior in any other way and because I, I thought they were going to get away and Cole was still going to be the bad guy but then there's that shot from inside their ship where you just see the glass starting to crack as the yeah, as the yeah. Explosions and then, are coming. then the ship just explodes and it's like oh dear uh but there's that little moment where michael looks over at, at saru and it's like this little moment of like hey we just kind of you know the the, the 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 other people responsible for Giorgio's death like we, we just kind of achieved yeah. something there and exactly it's like it's probably the first time i've seen him smell at her, like in a long if, if at all i don't know if he ever smelled out in the first episode but certainly yeah. he's not been smelling out recently yeah definitely so so no that was uh that was good uh yeah uh pretty 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 great all around so i hopefully this uh trend continues uh i wouldn't say it's perfect yet i would say it's still you know some pacing here or there sometimes i feel like some moments could breathe better that kind of thing it's definitely into the good like strong good territory now and before it was yeah. just like okay this is this is enjoyable but it's not you know it's not like really good tv yet yeah um there's still improvements to be made but 
uh, on the whole, like, like we're at a point now. If the con- if the quality is like this for the rest, I won't. F- I'll feel quite happy continuing to watch it and feel quite happy. Exactly. I think before it was, we were like, okay, this is good, but you needed some improvements to stick around forever. Whereas yeah. now it's like, okay, if this is it, if this is you know peak level, that's all right. Yeah, but given they're already growing, there's a good chance that this is not peak level. Better. Exactly. And there'll be yeah. more peaks to come. So. Uh, I want more Twin Peaks. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> that, that has been Star Trek Discovery, uh, the mid-season finale. Uh, so, by all means, let us know what you think about it in the comments below. Give us your uh, ideas and opinions. Um, how much did you enjoy the uh, the Klingon sex? Uh, don't lie now. I know there's some people out there that uh, they are already looking up Pornhub. They've already got it open. They're already like, Klingons. Yes, give me the Klingons. Um, so... Let us know what you thought of the episode. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fudge for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You can do that over there. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. We'll see you next time. Have you got any vanilla?